Hello and welcome to Ask Me About K-Pop, the essential guide for recent converts and seasoned fans alike. My name is Shannon. And I'm Angelica. And welcome to the show. It's officially spooky season. Yay. It's October now. Another one of our favorite times of year. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we are breaking out a classic episode model today because we have our patrons working very hard on an mm-hmm. assignment for later in this month. We thought that we would do a song battle, old school style, just the two of us. (laughs) Yes, this title battle comes from a suggestion from uh, someone on our Discord. They sent us this list and prepared it for us. So we took it upon ourselves to rank them. I actually think the Discord maybe already played a version of this I think they might have already done this one. Amongst themselves. Um, So we have for you today 10 songs, all titled Villain, singular, either in all caps or all lowercase. It's so interesting how many of these villain songs have come out this year Mm -hmm. the oldest song on our list is from like 2020 yeah all of these songs are from within the last two years which is so interesting like what is going on that all of these idols are releasing villainous songs uh it's a very interesting trendy concept i guess Yeah, I thought it was really interesting and I like wanted to look into it because I think we discussed it on our second episode of uh, Korean for K-pop fans that there's the word chewing gong, Mm -hmm, which means like protagonist hero. So I was like, what is the antonym of Mm. that uh, word? And it's chokdeja. And I looked for that in song lyrics and it's a way less common Mm. word. Yeah. Like it doesn't get used the same amount of times that hero and protagonist does Mm -hmm. but this english word villain and all of these songs use the english word Mm -hmm. villain there's no like there's no translation yeah yeah yeah. because we have had battles in the past where like our hide and seek battle not all of the songs said the english phrase hide and seek but every single one of these specifically uses the english word villain uh and that's just it's maybe i guess it's like it's like butterfly it's just a song that has like a nice ring to it and i do understand like the draw to a villainous concept sure that's so fun and there's so many different ways you can take it um so but it is just it's just funny that all of these are so recent i feel like we've never had a a battle where they're all one right after the other no these are new songs yeah and it's clearly it's clearly trendy Mm -hmm. because that they all came out in the last two years like yeah this this word has suddenly become trendy and that's fascinating, but also it felt applicable for spooky season because horror movies all have a villain in them. (laughs) So whatever. Um, all right. So the 10 songs that we are considering today are all titled villain, Mm -hmm. exactly villain and nothing else because that is our rules. So the 10 uh, artists we are considering today are Alexa, Cheetah featuring Jamie, Signature, Drippin, Girls' Generation, KDA, Key featuring Jeno, Pixie, Stella Jong, and Trends. With a Z. With a Z. <laughs> um, and those are them. So uh, we haven't done one just the two of us in a while, but we essentially went with our end of year rules. We each assigned a point value to each song based on where it ranks. And I haven't looked at these yet, but we're about to find out how we totaled them up. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Yes. So if this is the first of these episodes you've ever heard, basically we rank it from one to 10. We give 10 points to our top number one choice and then descending point values from there. And so... The way that we average them together is just by which songs have the most points. All right. So to start us off, our number 10 choice in the villain battle goes to Villain by KDA. Oh, 
roll the dice, you know I'm the type Type to risk my life, not afraid to die Type to make you cry, type to put a price All up on your head, do just what I said I'm afraid This song was released on November 6th, 2020 And it was written by Becca Boom and the Riot Games music team And the lyrics are by the same uh, the this song is sung by YouTube singer Madison Beer and German pop star Kim Petrus. Um, and the song itself has like synthy arpeggios and like very vocoded, like layered mm-hmm. vocals with like a deep voice and a higher voice. Yeah. Um, and the lyrics of this song are entirely in English. And our key villain phrase for this one is I'm a straight up villain. Mm-hmm. Um, and the music video for this one has the like main motif is like long, spooky nails yeah. running across surfaces and then like trippy, watery, gooey, like mm-hmm. CGI and snakes. A lot and- of g- creepy textures is kind of the vibe of the whole video. It's sort of more of like, because KDA is a... Um, it's a fictional group. group. Yeah, it's like a fictional K-pop group for a video game and that has four characters. And this song is sung by the character Evelyn, which is voiced by Madison Two different Be- people. Yeah, multiple people, <laughs> one of which is Madison Beer. And uh, so the video is just supposed to be like a character video to like give you an idea of who this character is. Um, and it's just very like, you know, simple, like, She's a villain, has no feelings, like talks about locking her heart away. Like she's a villain and she likes to be a villain. The end. That is the story of this one. Um, But there are no K-pop idols in this particular track. And we KDA has like come up a couple times on our show before, but usually when like a member of G idol is one of the other voices. And so there is like a K-pop overlay, but honestly I ranked this song as the 10th purely because there was no K-pop in it. And I was like, regardless of quality of song, like I feel like it's sort of disqualified. That's exactly why I put it in last place too, is that this song is on the list as a pure technicality. Yeah. And I get it because when the listeners did this, they added, they, I think they replaced this one with a G idol song called villain dies, but we are pure Mm -hmm. title battles. We don't do variations. I I did look to see if there there was was something we could substitute it it with. Yeah. But so by, you know, Based on the skin of your teeth, you made it on the list in the first place. But last place yeah, for you, I don't, KDA. I don't hate the song. Like, it's, no, it's fine, fine and it's very vibey and whatever. But, like, yeah, I feel like it's just a technicality. And mm-hmm. I couldn't I couldn't in good conscience put it above Agreed. any of these real K-pop songs on Agreed. the list. Agreed. Agreed. All right. So in ninth place for us comes Villain by Cheetah featuring Jamie. This song was released on February 26th of 2021, and it was written by Han Yosub with lyrics by Cheetah and Jamie. Um, and the song has like really slow, funky bass and like a looped beatboxing as the main, <laughs> yeah, as the main <laughs> percussion. Um, and then the vocals, like Cheetah's vocals, all kind of stay really low throughout the entire thing. Whether she's kind of whisper singing in that first vo- first verse, or then when she's rapping, she's still very like down in her mm-hmm. chest. Um, And the lyrics are like, it's sort of a seduction song of like, I'm not afraid of becoming the villain. And then if you want it, you can have it is said 18 times (laughs) throughout the song. (laughs) And the visuals of this music video is kind of like a, like revenge story. Uh, It's Cheetah and like a lot of slick suits with slicked back hair and like women who are getting beat up by men. And then I guess they hire Cheetah to kill those men for them. To execute them on their Um, knees. Yeah. (laughs) And that's pretty much the plot. Uh, And yeah, the whole thing is kind of like crunchy and low. Um, And then Jamie's part has like a nice sort of like higher pre-chorus for it. Um, I did... Tell me about your opinion. I put this, of this one song. in my ninth place mm-hmm. because I 
I definitely like parts of the song. Mm-hmm. I think the like vibe is really good. I think Cheetah is really cool. Um, but I really don't like the Jamie part. I mm. feel like it clashes with the beat in this like very discordant way where like the Jamie part by itself would be nice, but on top of the chords that it's on top of, mm. I feel like it doesn't quite work. And every time it happens, I like, huh, it like takes me out of it. And then I think the ulti- that ultimately the song is like a little too repetitive. Yeah. Like I think when I do these episodes, I take, or when I rank things, I take everything into consideration. Mm-hmm. But I think my, what holds the most weight is would I put this song on a playlist and listen totally. to it again? And this feels like the kind of song that after the first, if you want it, you could have it. I'd be like, okay. And I'd probably yeah, yeah, yeah. skip it. See, I had initially ranked this one in my like ninth place as well because I like when it first started, I was really interested by it and then it just stayed really one yeah, note yeah, yeah. throughout. The, like it never went anywhere in a way that I felt like, oh, I wish that had a little bit more to it or a mm-hmm. little bit something else. But then when I was, when I had it on a playlist and was just like shuffling through all of these songs, and was listening to them in my headphones. It's such an interesting like composition. Mm-hmm. Like even though the vocals are arguably kind of boring in certain parts or like they get a little bit repetitive, the background of it is really interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I kept like I was I never found myself skipping the song because I still enjoyed listening to it, even though the like, if you want it, you can have it goes on and on. (laughs) Um, So I ultimately ended up ranking this six. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Um, Oh, well, I guess this next song, this is maybe one of those weird shared for eighth play. Like maybe the last Mm. song was not ninth. It's technically a tie for eight Ah. because this next song has the same point value, but with the same point value, we have signature Mm. villain. Signature's version of Villain came out on November 30th, 2021, and was written by KZ, Kang Bio, and Thelonious, and Mesobo. Thonius. 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 You said Thelonious. Oh, like I Thelonious did. Monk. I added too many words. <laughs> Thonius and Mesobo. And the lyrics are by KZ and Kang Bio. And the music, this sounds, the music of this has a lot of like very like bendy Mm -hmm. percussion and like a creepy harpsichord and big like doom, doom, doom drums. Mm -hmm. Um, And then the chorus itself is a little chanty and there is like a like shouted like bridge part. And the lyrics for this one, uh, the time where they say villain is they say, I can't refuse villain, villain. Um, I don't know why I didn't write more about these lyrics. What else is this song about? Uh, well, this we don't. This is a B side off of one of Signature's EPs, so there are no visuals for this one. Um, there's no stages, or, or we couldn't find any stages, and there isn't a music video for it. Um, but this song is definitely an outlier in all in the whole list overall. Sure. Um, so we must have like, you must have ranked this one sixth and I ranked this one ninth. Did we like, I ranked this those? one eight. Oh, okay. Um, cause it had the same point to- total yeah. as anyway, I won't try to do the math in my head right now. It doesn't matter. Um, but I thought that this, just didn't feel like a song that should be called villain. If that makes sure. sense. Like I didn't dislike the song. It definitely doesn't. Cause like, it seemed like the main trend for all these villain songs was some kind of like crunchy, thick, deep bass. Right. And this one doesn't have like a villainous feel to it. And I felt like that was to the detriment of it. Like sure. when I listened to this song, I don't think it should be called villain. And I, also seemed to be the only song that wasn't from the point of view of a villain. Cause this is like, I can't refuse, like they're falling for the villain, right? Right. But right. they are not the villain themselves. And that's fine. Like there's nothing wrong with that interpretation, <laughs> but it wasn't what I was looking for. Fair. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I think I just ultimately ranked this one eight 
for like kind of similar reasons. Like I have no, I have no immediate problems with the song. Mm -hmm. It very much reminds me of something that would be like a B side on like a CLC album Mm -hmm. or like even like a disjointed Weeki Meeki album. Like it just has like a girl so groupy. Weeki Meeki album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it has like a girl groupy sound. It's like a mm. little like red velvet happiness, but like a kind of creepier take. And yeah. Yeah. It just checked all the boxes. Yeah. Like in those girl, when we do the girl group episode and we're like, yeah, this was K-pop. Like this is what K-pop yeah. sounds like. If this was like a B-side on an album of a group that I followed very closely, like I wouldn't remove it from the playlist, but Mm -hmm. it wouldn't be the reason I bought the album. Absolutely. Is I guess like, it just felt like a B-side and it's fine with its B-sideness. And so Mm -hmm. it ended up falling an eight for me. And so it is ninth overall? No, eighth overall. Eighth overall. Tied. Tied for eighth. Cheetah and Signature said tied for eighth. All right. So then in seventh place... We both agreed on this one. In seventh place is Trends. Trends released this song on January 5th, 2022. Uh, it was written by Jinjin Jin from Astro, Ore Mude Dashkai, and Ra L, who is a member of Trends, um, with lyrics by the same group of people. Um, and this one has like the super deep bass, like very echoey percussion, um, and a lot of vocal harmonies throughout with like a mostly spoken chorus. Um, and I thought that this song kind of had like, it has that sort of NCT like noisiness element to it's it. It's exactly the same as Super M Tiger Inside. Oh. It has doom, doom, boom, 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 boom. It's the exact there same like go. notes in the bass as tiger inside that was like my immediate okay i well (laughs) cool i did immediately be like "Mm, yes sm so cool (laughs) glad that that was the clearly the inspiration Mm -hmm. for this one um the lyrics i'm bad villain uh that's the phrase with the word villain in it i'm bad villain i'm your healer your savior do you need a painkiller seems like a villain is approaching a lost traveler uh, and convincing them to follow. That's the story mm-hmm. I gathered yeah, yeah, yeah. from the lyrics that it seemed yeah. like the part of the movie where the villain mm-hmm. approaches and, and is like, like come, with, come me. with me. Um, <laughs> yeah, they do have a music video and then they performed this uh, and they usually wore like matching hoodie, like track suits, like velvety track suits with like a shirt that says trends on underneath. But the main part of the visuals for this is that they all have this enormous bandage wrapped Big around cloth. their arm or their hand and they unroll it and use it in like very, very intricate, complicated ribbon choreo yeah. where like sometimes it's like a big bass string and sometimes it like tangles them up in it and sometimes like one is holding all five and I don't know. And they tie like, it to their feet at some yes. point and there's so much intricate band choreography. Yeah. It's very impressive and it is the reason I ranked it where I ended up because the song on its own, I was like, I've heard this song before. Yes. There's nothing special to me about the song on its own but then watching it with the choreography I was like actually that's very impressive and I feel like credit where credit is due like that's pretty cool so I put it sort of in the lower middle I had the that is my Mm -hmm. exact reasoning for mine it also being seven is that like this I've already heard the song before Mm -hmm. so it wasn't breaking any new ground in that way but the band choreography was really cool and yeah. a cool way to set them apart. And so I had to give them some cred for yeah. that. So yeah, totally same reasoning. Love it. I love it. I love it when we're on the same page. All right. Now in sixth place, I think we both agreed on this one wow. as well. We have Alexa. Come get a cool girl. Call me a villain. So This song was released on July 16th, 2020, and it was written by Isaac Han, 
Okiro, Aaron Kim, and Megan Lee with lyrics by Alexa, Hwang Sung Jin, and Park Don B. And this song has like very deep mm-hmm. horns, like a big old like tuba, like blah. Yeah. And it has like kind of a, a kind of anti chorus. Yes. A little anti chorus y. Um, and the featured villain line in this one is Call Me a Villain, So What? And there's a fun little pun in the chorus as well, where she says, I'm a bad beat, like the Korean word mm-hmm. beat, which if you put us any syllable after it would become bitch. Yeah. So she's, but like, so it's like, I'm a bad light, like technically, yeah, yeah, yeah. but the official lyrics translate beat as hero. I'm a bad hero, mm, which I thought was interesting, but like. I feel like bad light makes sense because yeah. that's a phrase like, oh, paint them in a bad light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a bad light. But anyway, I thought that was clever. I love a little, I love a little sigh level like cursing mm-hmm. without cursing. So that's fun. And the music video for this one is very performance focused. Yeah. The whole thing takes place in an empty indoor pool, but like with several different costume changing and lighting setups. Yeah. But it's all in this abandoned pool and there's a fun like, night slash day and there's also like a ground and a sky like there's shots yeah. where she's on the ground and then a whole nother version of her and the dancers are also on the ceiling and mm-hmm. in black and white so it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. Ooh, all happening at the same time yes and there's like a sort of some cut scenes because there's not much plot it's mostly choreo focused but like of her looking normal and like cracking a code. And then there's like another version of her. There's like multiple Alexas in it. Um, But yeah, the choreo is very like fun and impressive. And I thought the song was generally very fun. Like another thing that just sort of checked all of the boxes. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, I thought ultimately like this would work every time I listened to it. I was like, I feel like I can just see this in a movie or like, like a montage of the villain getting ready or something. Or like, it made me think of the despicable me trailer that had like that John T Pharrell song about like being a villain or something. Right. And it's like, I don't know, like I'm bad at be good at being bad or whatever it is. And I just felt like I could really see it in a movie. Sure. Like the villain getting ready <laughs> with the like womp, womp, womp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, seemed, it felt very perfectly villainous to me. For sure. Yeah, I, I feel like this song just ended up in the middle because by virtue of other things on the list, mm-hmm. like I truly have like, I don't have any active complaints about it. It's like maybe a little more like, tough edged than Mm -hmm. the k-pop i choose for myself but i don't have any problem with it like it's got good vocal lines in it it's interesting enough Mm -hmm. it like it definitely feels like very you know like standard k-pop it's not rewriting anything but yes and i felt like that was why it stayed in the middle the whole time for me because this was when i listened to it like I listened to them alphabetically. So this was first and I like kind of was like, I feel like this will be middle and it never really moved because the instrument of it all felt very like, yeah, standard and also heavier in the like club EDM side of things than I usually like, but her vocals are really good throughout it. And she doesn't use that a lot of like vocal filters in it. So I felt like the quality of her voice like shines through yeah a and bit, like yeah. pulled it above certain other things because i was like oh but she's such a good singer that like this is maybe better than some other things yeah totally mm-hmm. all right fifth place goes to stella jong villain This song 
was released on April 7th, 2020. It was written and composed by Stella Jung herself. Um, and it has a really like jaunty, jazzy piano line throughout the whole thing with a plucky guitar. Um, and it has sort of like a French like cafe singer vibe mm-hmm. throughout the whole thing. Um, the lyrics, one of the main lines, because I'm a villain, um, but the lyrics go on, I'm killing someone, maybe you're killing someone someone we all pretend to be the heroes on the good side but what if we're the villains on the other um and the song is about how black and white thinking is boring uh the visuals are really like it has a very quirky music video to go along with the sort of quirky sound of the whole song um yeah kind of Wes Anderson like very French um and Stella apparently went to school there so you can definitely see the the influence I thought that was so interesting that the first like the second the video started I just like for reasons I couldn't articulate I was like this feels really French Mm -hmm. and then I looked her up and it was like she grew up in France and I was like well there you go (laughs) yeah it does and it because it has kind of like a silent it has silent movie elements to it with like the text on the screen and some parts are in black and white and the like main little choreo piece is a little like jazz square um and so it kind of seems like one of those old silent movies that tells a story but the main storyline is that she is like a chef who is cooking like she cooks things like pastries that have razor blades in them and like, and you know. poison. And I feel like mm-hmm. there was maybe implied that she was cooking people or something. Yeah. 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 Like villainous chef <laughs> of some kind. Um, but yeah, the song itself is really interesting and I thought it was really unique. Um, and I really enjoyed it every time it came on. Like I remember when this came out, I don't know why I watched this cause I do not know anything about Stella Jung, but when I came to watch this for our research, I was like, Oh, I've seen this before. Um, but I enjoyed it. It's a very fun song. I was a little bit disappointed when we watched the stage because the stage, like the song is so fun and the music video is very quirky. And then the stage felt very boring and simple. And she like, didn't really, she just sort of like sat there and sang the song and then got up to do a jazz square. And like, that was it. And so for that reason, I did not rank it higher Mm. than right in the middle. Okay. That's fair enough. This Mm -hmm. one ended up in fourth place for me Mm. because again, I'm waiting by uh, playlist longevity and this feels like a song that I would happily listen to anytime Yeah, yeah, yeah. and would go nice on one of my little K indie coffee shoppy playlists. Sure. And so I ranked it at four, I believe. Fair enough. Okay. In fourth place is Girls' Generation Villain. Wow. I'm about it. This is the way. This song was released on August 5th, 2022, and was written by Tiffany, Sue Young, and Josh Cumby. And the lyrics are by Sue Young and Tiffany. And the song has like hand claps and a lot of like EDM whooshes mm-hmm. and sirens and a like very like fuzzy vocal processing that like yeah. makes everything kind of like crunchy and it opens with like a police scanner like god oh, we gotta catch the girls yeah. generation they're getting away we're gonna need backup <laughs> um there's a lot of sirens throughout the whole song as well yes um the main villain line in this one is call me the villain because i'm busy killing it Um, And the lyrics talk about how going off-road is more fun and living above the rules is easier. Mm -hmm. And Soo Young said that the lyrics were inspired by the Emma Stone movie Cruella. Mm. That was what they drew from to write this. Yeah, I I wrote this down. I was like, like, the vibes are, I'm the villain and don't you wish you were too. Or like, I love being a villain and I'm having so much fun. Busy killing it. (laughs) Um, there are no visuals for this one because this was a not B-side. the main promoted song. And uh, Tiff- Hyoyeon said on a TV show, I don't remember if it was Sochi or if it was something else, but she said that Tiffany was very tough on them when they were mm-hmm. recording this song. She was very particular about yeah. how it was all said and the, the vibe, how the vibe was presented and stuff. <laughs> 
Um, so I think I'll go first because I ranked this one lower. So okay. we should leave it on your more like positive note, I guess. But sure. I think this one just ended up at five for me for like a couple of reasons. Like a, there are songs coming up that I just liked more. And I think of all of the songs on the forever once, if I were to rank all of the songs on forever one, I feel like this would be kind of near the bottom for me. Mm. I don't have a problem with it. I think that's a perfect album and I never skip this song. Mm -hmm. But do I like most of the other songs on the album better? Like, yeah, they're like more my style. Um, I think it is just the like EDM whooshes and I hate songs with real sirens in them because I almost exclusively listen to music when I am driving sure. and I hate when a song has a real siren in it because it will get me every time. Yeah. It doesn't matter how many times I've heard the song. I will still be like, ah, cops every time that the siren part happens um and yeah i don't know i i i thought it would be higher but as i added other things it just kept like falling under stuff sure uh, because there are other songs on this that i just like more that but totally i liked this whole album so much and new girls generation music and i could never be mad at it ever Absolutely. But you... This was my number one <laughs> pick. Um, and it was from the beginning. Like, when I first looked at this list, I was like... And I sort of, like, ranked it on my gut. I was like, I bet that this would... This is going to be my number one. And it just never changed. I love this song. It's so weird. It's such a weird song. And it ha it goes through, like, such different things. But I love the line... I call me the villain because I'm busy killing it. I think that's really funny. Sure, yeah. And the way that it like busts into like, this is the way. Like, I fucking yes. love <laughs> it. Like every time it comes on, I'm just like, yes. And I like have to body roll. I like can't resist it. Um, this was one of my favorite songs off of that Girls' Generation album. Like, you played it for me because you were like, this song is so weird. I don't know what to think about it. And the first time I heard it, I was like, I love this song. Like, I think it's great. <laughs> like, it is weird. I don't no, want to bist No, 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 but, no. No, but I said that about You Better Run. <laughs> you Better Run is the weirder song. Oh, you're right. that's the one that goes... Yeah, 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 you're right. Like, where you're they, right, like, you're talk right, too right. fast. And it's that's the song that that's I introduced true. as being too weird. That's but true, that's true. I won't take away your love for this. I just wanted to clarify that You Better Run is weirder That's true, than but I do is. also really <laughs> love that song as well. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just thought that this song is so fun and like i think i don't know i just you just love it yeah so i just love it and one. it was a it was an easy choice great fantastic okay we are on to third place okay. and so for third place we both agreed that third place goes to pixie villain nice villain This song was released on June 15th of this year, 2022. It was written by Glow, JJ, and Jasmine with lyrics by the same people. Um, and the musical features of this song, it has like sort of Billie Eilish vocals of that like speak singy sort of. And then down where it's here. like doubled on mm -hmm. like a harmonic, so it's just like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then it has like a bent guitar sample. What do you mean by a bent guitar? Because it it's like. They took oh, the like, guitars, but it goes like, yeah, 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 it's yeah, like yeah, they yeah. took a guitar part, but it's been and then chopped wobbled and it. it's kind of wobbled mm, and it absolutely. loops in an interesting way. Totally. It has a very like unsettling feeling to all of the mm -hmm. instruments in the background. Um, and it has like footsteps as the main percussion that drives the beat throughout, which is really fun. Um, the lyrics, the, uh, they say the word villain. Just like a, I think that's the, that this is the only like sort of outlier and that the group never says villain. Mm -hmm. It's just like that sound clip of yeah. villain yeah, that yeah, comes yeah, yeah, yeah. in. And that's the only time they say it, but it's in there. It's in there. Um, and the lyrics that the girls actually saying are, I'm looking myself in the mirror. Who's the real me? I ask myself. So sort of a, like, am I the villain? Like who at like crisis of self, who yes. am I, etc. <laughs> um, but the music video is interesting. There's a lot of gun violence. So, so, so many guns. Um, it starts with them 
coming in and killing a whole motorcycle gang and then like taking over their hideout, I guess. And like the story that I got in it was that they became the villains and like they took over this motorcycle gang and then like they were famous and like rich and like people were like taking photographs of them and they were like successful but maybe like at what cost I don't know it kind of seemed like a villain success story right but there was also like an odd there's an interesting thing where like there's one set piece where one of the members is like robbing a jewelry store Mm -hmm. and another member like crashes a car and then the main dance sequence is them dancing in like that quarry from the girls generation Mm -hmm. music video but all of their crime scenes are behind them and wrapped up with crime scene tape Mm -hmm. so it's like they're i like imagine that is that they're in some kind of weird purgatory with all of their crimes or like living with their villainous deeds. Yeah. Maybe. And that the maybe. paparazzis also seemed like crime scene photographers at the mm. same time. Like they but were the like, girls are like smiling. Yeah, they're like, like mugging it for the camera. Through. So the way that the girls look very like satisfied with their villainous selves, I guess, is why I felt like it was a success yeah, story yeah, yeah. because they seem successful. For sure. But they're all this was like a title track for Pic Picchi. Um, so they did do it on music shows as well. Um, and I love the choreography to this song. Like I remember when this came out earlier this year and we had talked about it because it is again, a very strange like structure of a song, but I think it's so interesting. And like, because of its strangeness, I find it so fun and that like, as soon as it drops in after the villain, it's so catchy. Yeah. Like it's so catchy. I love the chorus and I really like the choreography. It's like sharp and has a lot of like isolations and, but it's just very, it's very fun to watch. Yeah. I totally agree. This was, um, it was higher than girls generation for me. Like just because I find it because I find it so interesting. Mm -hmm. Like, we're in a weird spot in K-pop right now in this fourth gen because there are so many groups yes, and a lot of the groups are doing exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like it seems like these days concepts are not very varied and that like Mm -hmm. everyone's following a similar path. So whenever like a song comes out that it's like, Oh, I've never heard a song like this before. Like that is very interesting to me. And this is definitely I have not heard K-pop that sounds like this before. Mm -hmm. And if K-pop starts going in this weird direction, then like, great. Um, Yeah, I really like this song. It's like catchy and it like gets under your skin and it moves in so many different Mm -hmm. ways. And all of the pieces are really different from each other. I do like truly hate, I truly hate the parts in the music video where they shoot each other in the head and you like are Mm -hmm. the bullet like screaming through their skull. Don't love it. Sure. But, um, I mean, Hey, I like, I, I've never seen that in a K-pop video. So again, (laughs) they do points for originality all around here. Absolutely. Those those were kind of my thoughts too, of like, I've just never heard on, it didn't make me think of anything else, like very unique. It felt to me. So I liked it. Great. And I highly recommend watch it. If you don't want to watch the gory music video, watch the stages because the choreo is really fun. Agreed. All right, in second place for our villain battle, we have Drippin'. This song was released on January 17th of 2022, and it was written by C.R. Kim, Kim Soo Bin, Choi Song Hee, Choi Bo Kyung, and Che Kang Hae. And the lyrics are by all of those people except for Kang Hae. <laughs> and this also has an incredibly funky bass so line, funny. some good synths, nice, lovely round harmonies, mm-hmm. great vocal runs. It's just a great song. Uh, the lyrics, the main villain lyric in this one is I'm the villain, villain, villain. Um, and, but the lyrics are just them saying like, you're so dazzling that it blinds me. I'll Mm. set your heart on fire today. Like the song is just them being like, girl, you're so beautiful. We should get together. But then they're like, but I'm the villain. And I'm Mm. like, why are you downplaying yourself this way? I don't know. 
dangerous dangerous uh but the music video for this one is pretty wild there's like a city descended into chaos Mm -hmm. it opens with like a commercial airliner exploding in the sky um and then the members of drippin are like street fighting with like masked goons and they reveal over the video that they all have like magic powers including the power to summon birds yeah (laughs) I, I like one guy turns into a fireball like yeah, a lot of them have all... cool powers but the idea that one of them just sends like a flock of crows into a yeah. restaurant is pretty funny it is pretty funny because one of the other one like one of the boys sends the crows like the bird style like to attack this diner and then one of the other members is in the diner and then freezes time to stop some of the chaos that the birds have created <laughs> and I just think it's funny that that like the pa- they're like working against each other in that situation. And there are some parts of the music video that make it seem like maybe they are like video game character, like they're playing their way through a game of some mm-hmm. kind because there's a few they like, go to Tron the villain game of, like, and yeah, it looks like the yeah, there's like a game and there's like the... the game gun and stuff. But anyway, it's a fun music video and they did a lot of like performance versions. I think there's like two different performance versions of this music video where they're wearing different outfits um but the song itself is like really fun it has a lot of like as the and like snaps as the percussions um and there's like really good like major high notes toward the end like the runs and stuff that they kind of like devolve into um is really grand and fun yeah, this was my number one because I love mm-hmm. Drippin'. I love oh. Drippin'. I love Drippin'. Wow. I've been obsessed with Drippin' since they debuted. They make perfect K-pop music. I don't know a single thing about them. I couldn't even tell you how many members there are because wow. I did not get involved because they're children and I don't care. But like, oh my God, they make perfect <laughs> K-pop. Like, It's perfect. I love Drippin'. Like, everything they make reminds me of like, early exo like Mm. i don't know they just make like the boy group music that i want to hear like the vocal heavy lots of harmonies like great like easy song structure that you're Mm -hmm. used to and like i don't know i just like think that drippin makes perfect music so i've had this song on my phone since it came out along with all the other drippin albums (laughs) that i listen to all the time i don't know if i've even ever said this on the show this is my secret love i I feel like i'm hearing this for the first time i love drippin their music is so so good i feel like the last baby boy group i heard that you were like their music's really good was gravity but then they were being but then they started yeah and i didn't you you've kept your drippin love a secret I think so, because I feel like I discovered that they existed at the beginning of 21. And well, I remember us knowing about them like from their debut because we thought the name was so funny. Right. But I was obsessed with their debut album, but Mm. didn't talk about it at all in 2020 recaps because I had missed it. Like it was Mm. like I got on the dripping boat too late. Gotcha. And I also think that their name is very stupid and I don't love that. I do that. not love their name. But they make great K-pop. <laughs> they just make great K-pop. So They do. This song is really fun. I had absolutely no... It only I ranked it at four only because other things I just ranked higher. But I thought this song was super fun. All right. That means there's only one song left to be in first place. And unsurprisingly, I think. Yeah, it does not surprise me at all. It is. Key featuring Jenno. This song was released on August 30th, 2022. It was written by Lee Hyung Sok, Rolo, Max Frost, and Ian Kirkpatrick with lyrics by Lee Hyung Sok. Um, and the musical features, the song has like this really crunchy staccato bass throughout that kind of echoes the feeling of like footsteps without actually being footsteps um and it has a lot of growls like literal growls Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and like little (laughs) sound effects of like and like pews and like yes and things like that (laughs) there's like a lot of weird little effects in it 
the main line of this song is you can call me villain. Um, the protagonist of the song is just like accepting their position, sort of like you're going to call me a villain. So fine, I'll be your villain. Um, and part of the lyrics are I spit out lines that aren't in the script. Maybe I'm the villain. Um, so sort of like I'll be what you make me out to be, which is one of my like just narratively one of my favorite kinds of villains. Sure. Of, like a villain who wasn't who doesn't believe who didn't themselves mean to, to be, be a villain. villain. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's like the alphaba and the like way we shot right. of it all of like, fine, you want to see a monster? Like, I'll give right. you a monster or whatever. Um, so love that plot wise. <laughs> <laughs> and this was a B-side off of Key's Gasoline album. So there's no music video, but they he and Jeno did perform it on music stages where Key is wearing like this great, like spiky green and black ensemble. Um, and uh, they also released a dance practice like SMP video for it so there's a few versions you can watch um and the song itself it's like it's truly a duet like it's really not yeah. a feature like Jeno sings the first like opening and they do all it. the choruses together mm-hmm. in the choreo they like mirror each other and it's yeah. very du- it's a duo yeah, song. yeah yeah for sure um but the whole song I think is just this was my number one um it has like it was immediately one of my favorite songs off of this album as well because I just love that you can call me villain line I think it's so fun and the choreo is really great to watch like there's this whole incredible sequence where he like controls the dance like he is standing in the middle and doing like very subtle hand motions and then you realize that like the dancers are like mirroring his hand motions it's really cool um it tells a whole like story and I feel like that's why I ranked it so high like the song is very unique it doesn't sound like anything else to me it doesn't make me think of other things and it tells me like a whole concept and like from beginning to end I get a story a villain's story so I was like this is the villain song yeah I totally agree it's really great and um yeah I love just the the choreo is really interesting because the song itself is kind of It's not one note, but it Mm -hmm. stays, but it stays very low and at a very like steady pace. And so like, it's cool that the choreo has like very fast and then like slow motions. Mm -hmm. Like they're kind of like breathing into it. And like, I think they make like an interesting pair Mm -hmm. and people, I think I already said this when you were talking about the episode, but people on the discord were like surprised that this song comes across as sexy as it does Mm, but like there is like there is something very sexy about this song and i just think that it's great and i think it's fun that key is like featuring other little sm babies Mm -hmm. and stuff and and it's cool that it is more like a that it is more like a duo song um yeah. Yeah, it's fun. And I think that their voices complement each other really nicely. Like Jeno's voice has kind of a growliness to it. And then Keys is like so crystal clear. So then when he cuts through with like his ad libs and mm-hmm. those sort of like the harmonies at the end, it just like really rings out nicely and like they it sounds good. Yeah, I it's love it. Here. So that's our number one pick. And that's our villain battle. And to recap, just for recap's sake, Mm -hmm. in 10th place, we had KDA. And then tied for 8th is Cheetah and Signature. Then it was Trends, Alexa, Stella Jong, Girls' Generation, Pixie, Drippin', and Key and Jeno with the top villain song. But overall, I feel like... I I I know we've done a lot of battles, so I can't say this definitively. But this felt like a very like uh, positive playlist, and that there was other than I think the KDA song just not fitting. Mm-hmm. And again, it's not even bad. No, there it just doesn't like fit. Yeah. There was no like, oh no, because sometimes we do these, and one of the songs is like so inexcusably not good that mm-hmm. it like throws everything off, or we both feel really differently about the songs. But I don't know. This one yeah. felt like, yeah, these are all good. Like this trend of this villain song, it's working. It's working. Yeah, it is working because these are all like this is a very 
it is definitely a playlist that I think has no like skips, even though there are some outliers on it. Um, it's, you know, they might not necessarily go all well together, but they are all good, fun songs. Um, so it's always nice when we have a, I mean, it makes it much harder to rank them, but it's nice when we have a battle that we can walk away with and be like, yeah, those are 10 good songs. Yeah. So uh, there's a playlist of all of these on our Spotify and our YouTube if you want to check them out. And uh, let us know what your number one villain song would be. And we'll be right back with a random game. All right, we are back. And this week, the random number generator gave us B1A4, a boy group from late second gen, early third gen, arguably from that time period when all the boy <laughs> groups names started with B and it was confusing. Yeah, and there were a lot of numbers in them <laughs> and like a lot of letters and B1A4 had them all. Yeah. <laughs> this was originally a five member boy band from WM Entertainment. They debuted on April 23rd, 2011 uh, with an EP called Let's Fly. Um, and apparently they were introduced through a webtoon pre-debut, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. um, B1A4 is still together so there's a ton that we could talk about with them. I feel like they deserve a deep dive at one point um, cuz they've already been they've already celebrated their 10 years. Um so they're around. Um so just a quick overview of them. Um they've released 9 studio albums, 4 Korean and 5 Japanese with 7 EPs as well as 4 compilation albums. Um and they've even done a US tour. So they have been out and about and on the scene since 2011. Um but they currently have only 3 members down from their original 5. Yes, and I believe that um most of the remaining members are in military right now mm, because so that's perhaps on a the time they are at. Um, but yeah, we're going to watch their most popular music video, which is from 2013. Yes, it's from their fourth mini album, which was called What's Happening. And the song is also called What's Happening. All right. Fantastic. Well, if you would like to check out B1A4 What's Happening with us, just pull it up and press play when I say go. Three, two, one, go. Oh, oh wow. Look at the look at the, look oh, at 2013. Look at everything. Look at all of these shorts. So many long shorts. Yeah. Long shorts like over leggings is mm -hmm. like such a funny. Okay, They're this like... is a I don't even know where to begin in describing this music video. <laughs> Because there's like a dollhouse, like a girl with a Ken doll. Yeah, and they have like creepy doll faces. Like they yeah. don't have human faces. But then there was also like one of the members was just like decapitated in a box and talking on the phone to the Barbie. But now the members are... They're in a lot of different They're in places. a lot of, yeah. Trapped in oh, dollhouse rooms. Being in a tiny box is very 2013. Like yeah, yeah, Shiny yeah. Dream Girl and A Pink Mr. Chu both have oh this being in a tiny box thing. This boy looks, I'm going to point him out again, <laughs> but one of them looks so much like Joshua Hong. It's tripping me out. He has like a something about his eyes. Maybe it's not Joshua. Look at all those fake tattoos. <laughs> okay, so now this member is like threatening the Ken doll in an elevator. <laughs> <laughs> this is all very silly and goofy. Oh my this God. one. Oh. Not in this particular instance. Oh, that one has long hair. They're just wearing so... Okay, I, I okay, see it a see little it? bit. I see it okay, a little bit. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're just wearing so they're much. They're wearing so... They have so <laughs> many different outfits. So much they're shorts, all so like, many... Bracelets, really patterns, so, many so many earrings, a lot of fake tattoos. And okay, so now it seems like the, so many gloves and accessories. <laughs> now it seems like the 
Ken doll is like boarding up the doors so that the members cannot nope, come they're busting into the in. house. They're busting oh, in no. to get this Barbie doll now. They literally burst through the doors. Oh no, oh, no. Ken, you're Ken. in trouble. Wow, you just got some... <gasps> ma- oh, he wow, smashed his back so hard his head came off. With a pillow. He got hit with a pillow. Oh, now the pillow members fight. are pillow fighting. Oh, we're just coming into this woman's house and destroying it? Why? To be honest, this song has been almost as all over the place as this music video has. I agree. And it's interesting that when we change, cut, they're in a different order. They're not standing in the same line. Yes, this part where it like way slows down. Yeah. And then, mm-hmm. Fascinating. Wow. Fascinating B1A4. Wow. wow. It's incredible. All right. Um, weekly recommendation time. Is there anything you'd like to recommend to the listeners this week? Um, I'll just shout it out as something that came out today and fits our villainous theme. Sulgi has made her solo debut with the song 28 Reasons, and it seems to be a story of a woman's revenge. Um, and she tells like the story. She is both the victim and the villain in the music video. So fits our villainous theme for today. Yeah. Uh, and the song is fun. I like it. Uh, when we were listening to it earlier, we both agreed it has very like Boa feeling to it overall, like a song that Boa would put out yeah. as well. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to see more of it because the music video is like fairly simple. Like when we got the teasers, I was expecting something like pretty grand and cinematic, yeah. but the music video itself is pretty simple. She only has like two outfits and there's like two sets. It's like pretty, you know. Yeah. Just doesn't, like we doesn't predicted like last huge... week that the teasers were yeah, yeah, extensive yeah. and they have and nothing to do like with the music And it didn't seem like a big video. production. Um, but I'm excited to hear like what else com- like what else she produces for, for this solo. And I am excited to see more of the choreo um, because she is one of my favorite dancers. So I know it's going to be good. Great. Uh, my recommendation is something that I discovered a few weeks ago, but I didn't get to talk about it last week because we were talking about, well, we were talking about girls only. And then I had something to talk about last week, but anyway, it's a newish boy group. I think they're new to me. I don't know much about them at all, but they're called Tempest. Mm. Um, and they're at, um, they're at the same company as unique. Is that you? Um, and they're it's a Chinese company and this song that they have out now called can't stop shining is like very like early Astro. It's mm. just like, it's nice boy music. <laughs> and I just always get so excited about nice boy music because you know, I hate when the boys yell. So True. I just, True. this caught my eye and I thought it was really good. So I'll make that my recommendation. Tempest Great. can't stop shining. There you go. All right. That is it for this week. If you would like to get in contact with us, we can be found at Pod on Twitter and Instagram, amakpoppod at gmail.com for emails, 181-AMAKPOP5 to send voicemails or text messages, P.O. Box 26096, Los Angeles, California, 90026 for snail mail, uh, Linktree slash amakpop for our Spotify, YouTube, Discord, those things, and patreon.com slash amakpoppod for extra bonus content. Um, We put up a vlog about our uh, Dancing With Our Dance Troupe recently, and we're uh, talking about and planning about and getting ready to do some other like little weekly offshoot Patreon shows so that there's yes. like lots of... So we want there to be more happening on Patreon mm-hmm. for you every month. And so to give you happening. some different like options for content. So stay tuned because we'll start... There will... Start to be more than just one monthly bonus episode on Patreon. So stay tuned for new and exciting things. Yes, love it. All right. Well, thanks for listening, and we will see you next week. Goodbye. Bye. Jonghyun, you're our inspiration. Hello 
and welcome to Ask Me About K-Pop, the essential guide for Eastern Convict. Mm. <laughs> Take two. Hello and welcome to Ask Me About K-Pop, the essential guide for Eastern... What? <laughs> Can I say it? Oh no! <clears throat> the lips, the tongue, the teeth. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 